What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here at Design Academy and today we're going to be building out all of the variants for the app bar, specifically the bottom portion of the app bar which is uh, what you can think of as some bottom navigation and we have a link to the description of this and it's a bottom app, app bar which displays navigation and key actions at the bottom of the mobile screens and since you've been getting the hang of actually building these out with me and even by yourself, I hope so. You already have, I hope you already have this down by now. That'd be awesome. If not, we're gonna go through this. You'll notice that we have four variations of this app bar, this bottom app bar. We have them labeled as, there's one with no floating action button. It's just a bunch of icons to access uh, the different actions. And we have the floating action button centered and you'll notice that there's some spacing here some intricate spacing there that we'll have to accommodate for in our designs and then we also have the uh, floating action button centered over the bottom app bar and those actions so what we'll do is in figma i have all the screenshots what we're going to do is create this one and i'm going to challenge you to create these two as it's very simple we're going to create this one get all the spacing right, and then I want you to, I'm gonna pause the video, build these out by myself, and then have you build those out, challenge yourself to understand the, the specs here, to build those out. And then we'll go over that, and then we're gonna build out the center cut variant together, as this might be challenging. Uh, but nothing is too challenging for us, as we will be fig maestros once this course is complete. So let's get started with creating this variant, that the floating action button centered. So for those of you who don't know, these, this is probably this is generally designed for Android as this is Materials Design System, and the specs are set to 360 width uh, by 640. But essentially, you don't have to worry about the actual size of the background. What you do need to understand in your head, have the mental model of responsiveness. So it will adhere to this spacing and whatnot as it is being expanded in regards to width as you can see here um, just as an example interactive example there um, so let's get started by specifying the height of the background for this center this app bar so i'm going to go ahead and now that we have the height of this uh, the width of the android device specified i can go ahead and change the height to 56 now that we have that set to 56, I'm going to change the background color. One thing we need to do, not forget, is enable our material design system library. And with that specified, go to my background colors and select on primary. And what we need are icons now. So if we go to our assets panel, we could either search for them or type in hamburger. No results for hamburger, that's disappointing. Go to our material design system and check out our icons and we can look for them. So there's the icon I need there. It's called reorder apparently. I can go ahead and click on this frame, hit command V and it will paste it. What we need to do is remove this fill color, detach the style, select the style icon and apply the proper color, which is content on primary. And then I'm gonna hold down option A on this, once I have this icon selected, option A will snap it to the left of the frame and then I'm going to apply the proper spacing. It's set to 24 there. So I'm just gonna move this over a couple times. Now I have that spacing set to 24, it's centered. And I can even just duplicate this icon to solely showcase the, the usage of placeholders. Uh, as you can, so if I go ahead, set the, that's set to 16. I've now duplicated it again and I'll ensure the spacing is set to 16 again between these two icons. So we have those set to eight to the right, which we want to set to 16. So I push that over and we're good to go. We have our icon variants. If you wanna be particular about your icons, you can search for them. Um, we can look for them as well in this library. I'm gonna pause this and find those icons for you real quick. If you can't find the icons, um, you can either search in the material design icons tool for the icons. So I downloaded all of those individually as SVGs. 
uh, just by clicking on them and then selecting download. But I've already downloaded them for you and they're in this exercise file. So we can actually, in your folder, so if you go to the proper section under components 02.1, um, you will have that, that will be accessible. And what we can do is open up our finder and drag all three of these components onto the canvas and we can go ahead and add the appropriate components now. But before I do that, I'm gonna change those colors, remove that fill layer, go to selection colors, click on the style icon and set these to content on primary and we'll be good to go. So I can go ahead and actually replace these two. So what I can do is individually drag these into the canvas, shift click on this, and you'll notice that with uh, Figma Smart Selection, I can hold down Option W and it'll snap this layer to the top and then I can swap them, which is very helpful. So I can, so I don't have to do all that resizing again. The, the, the resizing is maintained. I can go ahead and drag these two into the canvas and individually, swap these as well. Um, I'm gonna hit option W so that the spacing's not there and they both align on that axis. And then I'm going to switch them, then delete. And just, I'm gonna center this one, shift click it, and then I'm gonna swap those. Now I have all the desired icons that are reflected here. And we can go ahead and even pull in our neck, our, our floating action button. And we want the regular one, which is this one, and it's bigger in the thumbnail, as you can see. We can actually go ahead and drag this in onto our canvas. And with that done, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that it's snapped and it's horizontally centered here. So if we group it into our frame, and, and then what we're gonna wanna do is click clip, uncheck clip content click this and then hold down option H and that will center this because it was not centered. Option H, now it's centered. We have these icons properly implemented and we want these icons to have constraints that snap to the right and center vertically because they are on the right side of this uh, bottom app bar. And then I'm gonna set this to, instead of left and top, left and center it vertically on the axis. So that way when I resize this, the back, the elements are are vertically staying proportional uh, in in size uh, with the background, so it's all balanced. The icons are horizontally uh, uh, proportionate, um, the sizing's there, and then vertically it will stay proportionate as well as it scales in height. And then we have this floating action button. Uh, the specs are all good because we already built this component and since it's part of our library We just use the assets panel to drag it in and build the component which is super convenient And we know that it's a part of this component Because I'm actually clicking on the parent layer holding down Command shift H and hiding everything so everything that's hiding is associated with the parent layer selected which lets me know that this is an icon that I want I mean, the component I want, and it's layered accordingly. And again, these should all actually be icons. So what I can do is copy these, go to my material design system. I can paste them in my system as needed. Um, and then I can just apply this generic default color. Um, as the fill so I can type in gray one if you needed to long story short this should just be set to I could just set it to that and what I'm essentially trying to get at is making sure that these are all main components individually publishing that to this library uh, you can see I've added these three new icons click publish I'll organize them later uh, and we're gonna actually swap those out with these, these components, and I'm gonna show you a trick here. So if I go ahead and type search, there's my search icon. And if I hold down op, if I go ahead and make all of these components, create multiple components, and I go to my assets panel again, drag this, hold option, command, it should swap it in place but it's not, so we'll go ahead and manually do that. My apologies. 
So just grabbing all these icons here. And then once we have everything, we'll go ahead and drag these into the canvas and do the same exact operation. Once these have all been swapped, we would be good to go. Okay, so now that that's all done, just apply the proper colors again, set the content on surface, and we're good to go. So now we just need to name this layer accordingly. It is, it falls under the app bars category. So there's a couple of categories here, app bars, space slash space, and then it falls under the bottom category of app bars. And this is the app bar with a floating action button, the bottom app bar with a floating action button that is centered. So once that is done, we are good to go. We could even apply constraints here to the right so that it always stays center, or actually we want that to center horizontally so it'll always stay center when we stretch the width. So now we have the width stretching. What we need to do is apply the constraints again to right and center vertically and then left and center vertically. So now when this element's selected and it stretches, it is stretching uh, accordingly. And generally the height won't stretch since we have those specs set perfectly or properly. And then when we adjust the width, everything constrains accordingly as if it were in a responsive layout. So we can go ahead and make this a main component that's good to go. Now, I'm gonna pause this video and I challenge you to make these two components here. It's actually really easy. Don't make them from scratch. Just duplicate this layer and detach the instance and then start removing and adding what's necessary for these two variants. And I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've created these, uh, one, a couple things to point out is that you already have this in the exercise file so you can uh, check these and get up to speed or and just pay attention to the constraints if you built it from scratch notice that this floating action buttons constraints set to top and right so it'll move accordingly and then these are set to left and center vertically on this uh, all these icons on the left here these actions so that they are constrained proportionally and then we have the bottom app bar with no floating action button and we'll want to ensure that the constraints are set properly so for example if i click on this set of icons here and set those to right and center. Those will scale accordingly, uh, horizontally and vertically, uh, as well as this, this menu, or hamburger menu action. So those are the two I hope you enjoyed building by yourself. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and build out the bottom app bar with a floating action button that has this center cut. So it has this round cut in the middle of the background and that's actually really easy to replicate. All we have to do is create an ellipse that's set to 72 by 72. Once that's once you specify those settings, uh, ensure that it has the right background color. So surfaces um, on background, but not for the stroke. Whoops, set that for the background itself of the fill. And then what I did was I just ensured that I created a the proper rectangle. Um, for the background color, which is set to primary, and I set the proper dimensions too of the width of an Android device and the proper height of this bottom app bar. And what I did was I just grouped them. And since they're grouped and this is overlaid above, what we can do is utilize the uh, subtract selection. So when I click subtract, it will create the proper spacing here. And the reason this ellipse is set to 72 is because it provides that eight pixel padding all the way around this white space right here. This white space is eight pixels all the way around. And so when we go ahead and build this now, I have this background and I already have, what I did was I duplicated this component here and just attached it. It almost has all the same icons except for the heart, which we'll swap later. What I can go ahead and do is remove the fill 
and actually add in a rectangle because we have the background color applied to the frame, but in this scenario, we can't actually apply that uh, subtract selection to the frame. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is add this into the parent layer. So now it's a part of that frame. I can just go ahead and hit option A and W to snap option S. Whoops, I need to undo real quick. I need to select my background. Um, center, I'm gonna label that center cut background and I'm gonna hold down command left bracket and that'll push it all the way down to the bottom and hit option S and option W and that will snap it accordingly. And I now have the achieved uh, look as needed. And we can go ahead and double check that that's set to eight pixels, which it is, the width is set to eight. So that is awesome. We have the proper spacing set all the way around and that is how we create our center cut floating action with the floating action button for our bottom app bar. And just ensure that all of this is grouped properly, ensure that this spacing's correct and our constraints are applied properly. And you'll notice that the background now needs to have uh, constraints set properly. So if I go ahead and stretch this now, it will maintain that spacing, but with that center cut, uh, it, it will be much easier for you to communicate in development what is actually going on with that background. So um, that is something important to note. What we can do is, since this is a selection, we can make sure that's centered horizontally and select that rectangle and make sure that uh, stretches to the left and right at all times. So now, when we go ahead and move this around, it will actually move in alignment with the floating action button, which is awesome. And now that that is done, we have just, all we need to do is name this properly. So uh, rename that Fab Center Cut and make that a main component. And we are good to go, folks. Everything's scaling properly. We just need to add that heart icon. We can go ahead and check that, see if we actually have that in our library. I don't, but again, we can just use the material design tool icons tool, material design icons tool. And it's as simple as just typing in heart. I can go ahead and click that. You already have this in your finder accessible. So with that, I'm gonna go open up Figma, open up my finder, and we have that favorite. I'm gonna add this to my icon library. Go to my icons over here. And I'll organize this later with that favorite there. I'm gonna make that a main component, publish. And actually, since I didn't, if I type in favorite, I actually already have this in the library, my apologies. So I have the favorite icon. I'm gonna drag it in there, detach style, add the new on surface uh, content style, content on primary, drag this into my component here, make sure it's vertically centered, shift click and use smart selection to swap them quickly. And I have now uh, replicated this exact screenshot. So we can go ahead and now organize all of these. So with that said, I'm just going to organize all of these components and pause this video. I've organized everything. I am good to go. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and understanding constraints more. And again, later on in the auto layout section of this course, we will actually implement auto layout on the components as necessary. And I'll show you how to define and figure that out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.